All right, here we go, Overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker up on TSN 4, Brian Hayes, the dog Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. What's going on? How are we there feeling? They are a couple of backstabbers, I oh, guess. Yeah? <laughs> What's Have that? you guys been telling people around work that I call too much? Because yeah, but- I got a message from a colleague that said, that could have been a text. You call too much, and everyone at work knows it. <laughs> Not once. I don't recall saying it behind your back. I've said it on the air before. You're a big caller. You're a serial caller. You enjoy <laughs> calling people. Dude, yeah. that's what just are you a fact. talking about, a serial caller? You're a caller. You- you're a caller. There's there are different ends of the spectrum. There are callers and there are people that will never make a call the the, the rest of their lives. Right? There are serial texters where you're like, "Come on, man, just pick up the phone. Let's we could clarify this way way quicker." And right. then there's serial callers. You're a caller. You like to call. I enjoy fielding your calls. I call you a lot. I call you. Sometimes I was I get just going to say if I'm a serial caller, guess who else is? You. I call Whenever you point the finger, there's three others pointing right back at you. <laughs> I don't consider that insulting. I'm just. This is just a fact. I don't think there's anything wrong with being labeled a serial caller. I don't know who right. you're speaking of. I don't know who told you that. I don't want to rat the person out, but they said there's some people that comment that you call because I have a network of things. I do my job properly. I probably talk to Jamie every day of the week, and it's during the day. It's about different players, about different teams, what yeah. teams are thinking. Yeah. I talk to Darren Dreger a lot. But one person in particular said it's going around that this some of the stuff could be texts. <laughs> yeah, I'm and curious. I, I, I'm curious how it would have got to that point. It would not be me either. I'm not talking. Why would I? Oh, really? ran, why would, would I randomly stop and talk to people and say, "By the way, oh my, call you at some point." Yeah. I, no, it's like, not that. Why would that. I do that? It's not. It's not like you went up to somebody and said, "Oh, I'm warning you, the O dog might call." But it's almost like a combo where it's like my number might pop up and be like, "That guy calls a lot, huh?" <laughs> it's ignorant, and I, 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 I'll keep so that you, in mind. You, you think I it didn't. was me? No, no, because you've you've let Dude, noodles off. I don't hook. think. I don't know because Jamie, we have a professional relationship. I know it was you. It would not have been me because so I don't have a professional relationship. We don't have a professional relationship. Like, Let's clarify I, something. Noodles is not far off serial caller too. Noodles will sneak a call in. I Noodles, call a lot. We're old school. We're old school. We played hockey in the 2000s and 90s. We had to call people. You call a lot That's of people. Why. Both of you I call, call a people. lot. I'm on the phone a lot. Yeah. And and I, but you know, I'm not. Oh, I, it can't be me. I called you this morning. So I know it, that. I know me, it's not but you. you. Said like I said, I respect you. Here. I respect you. I you know exactly who it was. Him. You think it's me. You think I'm walking around the hall stopping people saying, Dude, I guarantee Jeff you, O'Neill's if I ever find caller. out that you said this to somebody, oh, that guy's calling again. That guy drives me nuts. I swear to God, I'm never calling you again. <laughs> Why would I ever do that? I don't know, but I just got a sneaky Why would feeling that. that it's just like the Jays offense, how I smelt a pair of shorts on the ground somewhere in the corner. Mm-hmm. I smell it again when it comes to this situation. By the way, last night, I've never experienced this. I was holding the remote when Schneider was oh, up was to crazy. bat. No, no. And I said, if you strike out, I'm clicking off. Off. Mm-hmm. Well, that would have been the end of the oh, game. It was the end of the game. It was two outs in the ninth. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, just do it. Go ahead and yeah. strike out because this has been misery to watch. Mm-hmm. I put three hours of my life into that. They are dribbling little hits to the it's midfield. It's crazy insane, how anemic dude. they are offensively. And you How know, could a guy that's 39 years old and like I'm not gonna a win's a win. You yeah, it's a, great, it's a massive say, they win. They won. They but breaking spring win. training, how is a 39 year old guy the only guy that's feeling good about himself? How it's, is that possible? It's a great question. Obviously, you're speaking to Turner. He had two doubles, a single, and he walked in the ninth. Like he was the reason they were alive, so Schneider could put it over the top because he walked yeah. in the ninth, and Varsha was pinch running for him. And Schneider, like when Schneider hit that, I could not tell that that was getting out. No, like it looked. No. Especially you know, that weird outfield there. It's yeah. like got a little jag in it, and it's like it goes yeah. back a little it's further. It's a goofy got, park. Minute, minute, it it's, a, it's a goofy park. 
Let's but, rip it. Let's rip the park and rip the city. Sure, yeah, I'm happy to do that. I, I, I'll take issue. I don't like Houston. I don't like the Astros. They, they're Too cheaters. Hot. Yeah, they, I, I'm not a but fan. they win a lot, though. They don't do they? win a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough Dude, to argue against that. If they get to the Final Four argue. this year, I think it's eight years in a row. Yeah, they get to yeah. the ALCS every single year. Every year. They, they go to the playoffs every year. They go to the World Series a lot. They've won multiple World Series. They're great. I mean, there's nothing... A lot of the... the dislike obviously drives from the cheating scandal but also is pure jealousy you know it's yes. pure jealousy it's that they win every year so uh good for them but yeah schneider hits that home run and and you're right turner turner's been great Bichette hits into that double play to start the ninth then he has a throwing error in the ninth which i thought was a little bit cheesy but still like right. Bichette, that would have been the story is Bichette, you know dribbling into a double play um, if somehow it got away from them in the ninth, if Chad Green couldn't close that game, and he looked really good. Like, that's a big find. Them picking him up last year, coming off Tommy John. He barely pitched last year, but he looks great. His stuff looked great last night. And, you know, Barrios was really good. Like, the arms, it's just been Dude, a weird Garcia start. Garcia going it's been in a weird there. Start. Yeah, going Garcia in there big. with first and third, I think huge. there was no outs. That was a massive huge. inning for him. He was huge. Right. Yeah. Huge, and it's a massive win. And David Schneider and every J fan, this is where you naturally you, you roll around back into the negativity. You're like, watch, he won't be in the lineup tonight. Somehow he, this guy won't be playing. And it was the same thing last year. Remember when he arrived? No one knew who he was, and he, he went to Fenway, and he had that historic week in Fenway. Yeah, and he had the, the mustache and the shades, and everyone's like, who is this guy? And then they went to Cleveland, I want to say, the next series, and he didn't start the series. He started the yeah, series on a bench. Yeah. Somebody tweeted that out, John Schneider, and there was like a gif or a meme or something, getting ready to sit Schneider tomorrow. Yeah. But hey, it's <laughs> the one thing that I, I will say, there's obviously that there's some juice that comes when everyone's hitting and the offense is flowing because you get the first base, you make the hand signals to the dugout or whatever. What's concerning and this is just a guy that played pro sports, not a obviously a professional baseball opinion, but there's just no juice. It's like, who's wh why isn't Vladdy walking up there like he's King Kong, man? Mm -hmm. Like he's King. They, They're just walking around in a fog already. And I find they, that to be concerning six games in. Should they bring the coat back then? Like, do you, do you Dude, get that? Maybe some noodles. Maybe they I, need some I'm just some telling mojo. you, like, remember they, they, they almost like two years ago, you, they had the coat, they had some swagger, mm -hmm. they repeat, and, and then people were like, God, they're, they're just dinking around the whole time. They don't take it seriously. Last year, they got rid of the coat. They want to take it more seriously, and nothing good happened. So maybe bring the coat back or bring some fun back in maybe, there. Like, I don't know. Like, maybe I, the home run jacket has to make a triumphant return. Although you, I, you didn't could be like, I, I didn't like that Charlie Montoya was like holding it sometimes. <laughs> that like, was always a little strange. <laughs> it was a bit rich for me. For yeah. the guys. <laughs> like, Charlie, you're on pace for like 67 wins. Maybe don't put He's the jacket standing on. standing there holding the coat. Yeah. Although, you know, listen, he was a player's manager. Yeah, but they still, all liked like, him. Just, uh, it, well, yeah. it, I'm with you, though. There might be something to that and the mojo of the team. But this is what happens. Like, you know, they're 3-3, three and three, which, again, is a really good start considering it's in the trop and then in Houston, and they were one out away from, from being 2-4 and four and being shut out. Like, no hit and then shut out. That would have really been difficult to Oof. digest. Yet Schneider and Turner, for that matter, saved them last night. You don't have to worry about it. You roll it over, you see what you've got tonight. Um, but, yeah, there, there's just there's too many guys, and it's still so early. But, like, Kiermaier is lost at the plate. Oh, wow, Absolute dude. disaster at the plate. Um, you know, you just have guys at the bottom of your order and your lineup that just are not really prone to supplying a ton of offense at the best of times, you know? So it's a scenario where they're going to lean a lot on Springer and Bichette and Vladdy and Turner. Kirk looks awful early, you know, at the plate again, Alejandro Kirk is Dude, really struggling. Man. Yeah. It's like you look at his stats since he went to the all-star game in 22, basically from July or August in 22 up until now, it's like a below replacement level catcher in terms of what he's supplying offensively. He's got an yeah. OPS of like 680 or something. And, and other sports, it's gotta you be call way a better. transaction like that, picking one guy, choosing one guy over the other. I've described it in the past, and we all have as a fireable offense. But <laughs> watching him, it, it, it's, it's crushing offensively knowing that every double play is going to happen, even the impossible ones, because he can't get the first base. And I find it quite embarrassing to watch. Like, it's just like, well, this is going to be like the most miraculous double plays are like, you're actually going to get him because mm -hmm. he's not getting there. 
It's just like, yeah. how did you, you're experts in choosing, and I get it, you get some wrong. Everybody does. Nobody bats a thousand as far as picking players. Mm -hmm. But to make right. that mistake, give me well, a break, man. Remind me, did did he come from nowhere or was he a high prospect? No. I feel like he came from nowhere, correct? Uh, effectively. I mean, he made his way up the minors and, and was hitting really well in the yes. minors. Yes. Like, was coming but was not by any means the equivalent of what Marino was. Like, Marino was right. their number one prospect. That guy is like, watch out. He's got all the makings of a big leaguer. And and Kirk didn't, you know. And a right. part of it is Jansen's not available. He's hurt. So that, that certainly is going to, you know, factor into things. But, um, yeah, Kirk's, what is he, two, two for 18 to start the year. Varsho's got two hits. Kiermaier's got one hit. Um, you know, Kiner Falefa... You're not going to get much. I mean, it, it, again, it's early. They're three and three, whatever. Schneider saved the day. But it has not been necessarily anything to write home about early in the year. Yet, we'll see what they take out of Houston tonight. Maybe they win the yeah. series. And then, ultimately, it's not how. It's how many, right? You get wins, yeah. and you chug, and you move on, and you go to Yankee Stadium. You try to pick up a series win there. And you come home. You got your home opener, and... You know, we'll see what comes of it. So uh, more on that later this afternoon. Someone had a great tweet, actually, a really quality pun. I appreciate a good pun. Uh, someone writing in saying, today is a great day to take digs at Houston. Oh, that's a good one because Stefan Diggs is on his way to Houston. Dude, see you later. I'm tired of his antics. Got one of the best quarterbacks in the world. I'd love to get maybe Carlo can come on near the end of the show just to chat about how he's feeling, what he thinks. But I'm tired of listening to that guy, seeing his antics. I don't know what his problem was, but if I'm a Bills fan and I'm a Bengals fan, I'd say see you later. That's see what they've done you here. Later. But who Bang! are they going to who are they going to replace him with? Because he's a pretty damn Bang. good player. He's a, he is. No, he didn't have a great statistical year last year, right? Like no, but now some might argue he would argue it was because the playbook. And because oh, Allen didn't find him. Break, Remember in the playoffs that Why game against Allen Kansas City? Why wouldn't Allen want to find him? Remember the Kansas City drop? Remember the drop yeah. he had where he had a go route and he was wide open and, and Allen put it right in his hands and he dropped it. And that very well could have been the difference between them winning and losing the game. He's not a young guy. This is also the nature of that position in pro football. The Packers did it with Devontae Adams. The yeah. Chiefs did it with Tyree Kill. And now the Bills are doing it with Stephon Diggs. They will be okay. Right? It's listen, they gotta find them weapons. There's no doubt about that. Gabe Davis is down in Jacksonville and now Diggs is in Houston. They do not have anything close to a number one wideout in Buffalo, but they still have the draft. Other trades could still happen. And to O's point, it seems very clear they could not bring this guy back. He no. had to go. He he was a he, he was obviously an issue behind the scenes. Remember his brother was always tweeting out, "Get him out of get there, him get him out of there, out, that get him to me Dallas. nuts." And you knew that was coming from him. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. I, I, this may be a coincidence. I doubt it. Although I would assume this this deal was in the in the works for a while. But I'm sure you guys saw this last night. You know, Robert Griffin the third RG three posted something. Uh, online, you know, asking the question, is Stephon Diggs essential to Josh Allen's success? And he gave his answer as to how good those two have been. And someone responded saying, does Josh benefit from having a top tier receiver? Yes. Is he essential to his success? No. And then Diggs responded, you sure? Question mark. There it is up on yeah. TSN4. And then like 12 hours later, he's out. Like, I... I I would guess the deal is it was already in the making. It was moving yeah. that direction. There's a chance he knew it, and that's why he tweeted it. But there's also a chance it was 90% home, and then Brandon Bean saw that and said, out, out, out. Yeah. I'm not. You cannot have this guy taking shots online at his quarterback. Like, everything is about Josh Allen, clearly, in See Buffalo, as it should later, be. See you later, man. Yeah, and he's gone. And, you know, listen, if you're in Houston, they are loaded with talent. But I don't know if Diggs is going to settle in well. Like, Diggs is not going to be the number one guy down there. He's That's what you always got to wonder, three. what's going on on the other side of it, Hayes. Right. Houston's got to be thinking, we've got a star young quarterback. Could win an MVP in the mm -hmm. next five years. I don't know. He might do it next yeah, year. Yeah, Stroud's a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. Do we Look what this guy is doing with a quarterback like Josh Allen. Do we really want to bring that into our locker room with our young quarterback and have him deal with this guy? got to be a massive consideration but sometimes I, talent I wins over everything i agree it does but you you also look at fit and chemistry and you know the everything that goes culture mm -hmm. and you bring somebody in you, your room better be strong enough to handle it because you know he's a guy who's 
outspoken yeah. and he will upset the apple cart if he you know he he'll upset people if he's not happy we saw it last year yeah and then his brother will chime in and and oh you know, it's just a three-ring circus man and it, like he's going down there nico collins he's the man in houston like that 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 dude broke out last year like he went off for almost 1300 yards eight touchdowns he was a beast and he's a young player that they've invested in so he's going to get touches, and Stroud loves him naturally, and Diggs will find a role, but I don't think he's going to be a clear-cut number one. So we'll, we'll see how he reacts to that. Herm Edwards in about 15, 20 minutes on this and more. Leafs Tampa tonight, and the Leafs have a chance to clinch tonight. They have a chance to basically push Tampa completely out of the rear view. They're six points clear of them right now. You win this game in regulation, you're eight points up, basically over. And yeah, Florida got yeah. Florida lost again last night. Like I fl- thought they would win that game a hundred million percent. I'm like, they'll show who, they'll show the real Florida Panthers, and they lost five three to Montreal. Yeah, and they were down five one or five two at one point as well. And yeah. and you know they're reeling, like they are reeling, and they the, are. The, they're only four points up on the Leafs. And you know, again, that wouldn't change the dynamics of who you're playing. It would it would actually lock in the fact you play Florida. But home ice is still available to the Leafs because they have games in hand. They're four points back, and they still play Florida one more time. If you're so, you're making a huge mistake, though, if you're thinking that this will filter into the playoffs, they have the people in that locker room behind the bench. They will be ready come playoff time, and it's actually a dangerous scenario. I don't, I don't know what you guys think, but to struggle right now with the ups and downs of the season, they could flip the switch right before the playoffs and be in go mode. Bob gets hot, and away they go. They will be ready, and this will not affect them. Is I think my they'll prediction. be ready. I, I'm I'm going to see them live tomorrow, but I I think the biggest we want a full thing scouting them, report. I, I will. I, I mean, I get to see them uh, tomorrow, and I get to see them next week. But ultimately, uh, health is a big thing too, though. You know, you know, Verhage, uh, Ekblad left last night. You know, so. Uh, you know, Kachuk didn't play. It sounds like an illness. I think something might be going through their room even. But ultimately, like, it's not – I don't know if this is the opportune time to not be at least feeling good about your I team. Agree. And I, I think Mo said – you know, Paul Maurice said the right things last night. He's great, and he's great in the media. He's going to say the right things tomorrow. But there's still enough time. Like, they, it's not like they're – this isn't mm-hmm. two games before playoffs. They, you know, they've still got enough games to feel good about themselves, and they know how to play. I wouldn't put it this way. I, if, if the playoffs started today, them winning two out of their last ten, I'd probably still have them ahead of the Leafs as far, but I wouldn't have them 60-40. I'd have them 52-48 mm-hmm. type of thing based on pedigree, what they did last year, all of that type of stuff. It, you know, The gap would be closer. But I, I, I wouldn't sleep on that team, but they haven't looked good. No, that's, that's the, the truth. That's it. That's I mean, the truth. You've got to be honest. It may not matter, but, you know, like it, it's also a scenario where if you can pick your poison, obviously you'd rather be hot. You know, we've, we've said that a lot this year leading up to the end of the season with a, with a league that is steeped in parity the way that it is, it yeah. very well could be who gets hot at the right time, like who yes. is peaking. And Florida's doing the complete yeah. opposite. Could they spin it between now and game one? Of course they could. Do they still have the makings of a great team? Absolutely, if they're healthy. But, you know, if you're stumbling in and you're not feeling great about where you're at and maybe Bob's not playing his best hockey, that is concerning if you're Florida. Like, it, yeah. it should be concerning. You can say whatever you want that it's not going to matter. There is an element of mojo that comes with getting into the playoffs and peaking at the right time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, they stumbled in last year, though, too. That's the crazy. They made the playoffs on mm-hmm. the last day of the season because Pittsburgh – the night before, lost, lost, yeah. lost to Chicago. Mm-hmm. Like there, you know, there's there's a lot at factor here, a lot at play. But I come back to the teams have to worry about what they're up to. Like you know, the Leafs have to continue going. Got a big game against Tampa again. It's it's more about jockeying in the standings. And what you said at the start of the conversation, Brian, you can. Tampa will not be a threat if you win tonight Mm -hmm. as far as in the standings. And then you look at Florida and go, okay, we got our sights. Are we going to try and catch them in the end, get home ice? Then, you know, you've, I I think Boston's gone. Uh, Likely. Yes. It feels that way. Unless they lose everything. The rest of the, they're not, but they won again last night. Now they're four points clear with six games to go. I mean, that's going to be tough for Florida. I I think Florida's got the tie break in that, but um, yeah, it seems like it's going to be, Leafs Panthers like that kind of feels where it's going and it has fluctuated a fair amount but Joseph Wall goes tonight and I'm 
I'm like it does feel like Samsonov over the last month has clearly taken over. You know, yes. like if it is a yeah. tandem, that's fine, but it's a one A one B, and the one A is Samsonov. But I'm curious if this this guy can play himself back into the conversation over the next two weeks because they have how many games do they have left? Eight games. He, he's going to get four starts. I think he's have to. Yeah, I think he would have to have two to three dynamite starts in a row, not just one. Uh, he's not going to play well tonight. And then they're going to say, oh, maybe it's actually this the guy. Because mm-hmm. I've already played that. Homie already played that game. And I'm not playing it anymore. I think he would have to have two or three starts where it would be outrageous, where you're like, maybe he means business. Noodles, do you agree? I, I agree. But what it is, too, it's I think it'll be a combination. If he has two or three great starts and then Samsonov has two or three you know, struggling starts, then you start to go, okay, what are we looking at? Right now, today... Samson off starting game one for me. Mm-hmm. But again, we've got how many weeks? Is it two and a half, three yeah, weeks? Yeah, two and a half. We're I mean, calling it, yeah. The, the, you know, season two and ends a half two weeks. weeks tonight, I believe. So there you go. So you, you add another three days on to that or whatever. So you, you're 17 days away. Right now, I, I think Samson off gets the net. But both of them are capable. And I think that's what you're trying to achieve here is have two capable guys that you can go with and trust going into the playoffs. And if one falters, you go to the other. But you need both of them playing to the yeah like push, pushing. And Jamie, time. I would go to Samson off and say, "Look, you're going to be the starter. What do you need, rest wise? Because all we care about is you playing game one and being awesome and and continuing throughout. We want you to be awesome for two months. That's what we're looking for, because that's what you need. What do you need coming down the stretch here for that to happen? Is it rest? Is it do you want to? Not dress, not dress, being back at whatever it is. We're going to give it to you because we want you to be dialed in. So whatever it is, you tell us. My my whole thing with him, I don't know how you guys feel, is he's he's a very it's Jack Campbellish as far as his media. You know, like he's very high, he's very low, like stuff like that. You just need him to be feeling good about his game, and we've seen that the last what, three weeks, you know, Mm -hmm. where he's saying, I don't care, I don't give an F about what happened here last at Buffalo, you know, comments like that. He's got a little swagger. But Joseph Wall, I don't think, I don't know how you feel, Brian, I don't think he's out of the picture at all. I think he's a guy that, you know, is going to push. I I would guess, I mean, it's human nature and noodles. You've been in these rooms. Right. Publicly, they're going to say it's a tandem. Publicly, they're going to say we trust both guys, believe in both guys, and we haven't made up our minds yet. I believe they have a guy they think is the better option. Doesn't mean that he is playing that way, but they think that guy's better. Like when we assess his play, if everything's equal, that guy's better. Because if, if everything is equal, you got to pick, right? right? You're not getting to the playoffs and saying, you got game one, you got game two, and then we'll figure it out. So right. if everything's equal, they have a guy they believe in more. I don't know who that is. I don't know if it's Samsonov or Wall. But if it is Wall, then he's not out of it. Because I think all he's got to do is show that he's he's performing better or he's looking healthy or he's looking like he did early in the season. Because, right. I, I mean, I just I don't believe that it's a complete 50-50 mentally. You know, right. and, and again, that's why you play the games. That's why you, you have a coaching staff. That's why you lean on your goalie coach and your, your consultants and the video and the statistics and the history. And you say, okay, regardless of how I maybe would feel in a perfect world, we're not living in a perfect world. That guy's not playing well enough. This guy's playing better. We're going with that guy. That very well could be the case. But if it, I do think in the back of Sheldon Keith's mind, and I would guess Curtis Sanford's a part of this too, they have a yeah. guy they believe is better. They believe can win games. And trust. It's and, about trust. You probably yeah. trust one guy a little bit more. So you're right. They, and they I don't probably, know who that is. I, I don't have that answer, but they do. They do. So I I think the I think you'll get your answer down the stretch here with the starts that they the way they lay out the starts. Because you're gonna lay out go back to what you're saying, oh you're gonna lay out whoever starting game game one, the pathway to make sure they're ready to play that night. So what is that pathway? If you got eight games left, is it five out of eight? Are you pick, hand-picking the teams that you want to play against? Are you playing them against Florida in Florida? Are you keeping them away from that in case mm-hmm. he has an off night right. and it doesn't look that good? Like that's, these That are could the be what that, determines it. Who plays uh, against Florida that game? But I, or but I, doesn't I, play. 
Well, that's the thing, Brian. I don't know if you play them that game. If it's yeah. a throwaway game, if it's a game that has zero repercussions and you're locked in playing them. Fire just, Martin Jones in there. Well, I, I mean, you're, you, I just think that there's – there's a lot of different factors that go in, and we're talking about it for three minutes. They probably talked about it for hours. Mm -hmm. And there is a trust factor. There's somebody, I guarantee you, Sheldon Keefe, True Serum, trust one of them yeah. more than the other. Yeah. And, and we'll see what it is. And it's probably, it's a combination, I would say, of, of trust and also who do I think is better. Because right. that has to factor in, too. Like, if you get to a point where you're down 3-1 in a series, who can steal games? Gets to game seven, it's tied in the third period. Who do I there? Who do I trust? But also, who do I think can make 15 stops in a period if he has to? Yeah. You know, like it, it, these are all the things that, that factor in. Um, and we don't have those answers. We may not have those answers until game one. And I am, I am skeptical of the idea, or I'd be cautious of the idea of maybe going to Samsonov and allowing him to take his foot off the gas. Like he's had to compete, he's had to fight for his life. Like, fight right. for his NHL life. And the idea, if you go to him and say, you're the guy, you got it, game one, two weeks before, what happens if he cools off? What happens if he if he takes it the wrong way? Or I, I don't know. These are all things that they have to be considering. Um, they are considering, and, and we'll see how it plays out in the next two weeks. Leaves Tampa tonight. So we'll tee that up throughout the afternoon. Stephon Diggs is out in Buffalo on his way to Houston. Uh, we'll tell you what they got back, what's going on with the dead cap, what else could be happening around the NFL. Herm Edwards coming up. Jay's back in action tonight, coming off a massive win in the ninth last night. Um, and there's a lot to get into, including role play level of concern in about an hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Pierre Lebrun still to come. Role play level of concern. Adam Hadwin, who's on his way to the Masters next week. Love seeing that. Adam Hadwin coming up later this afternoon. We're looking forward to it. The Jays in action tonight. The Leafs in action tonight. Raptors lost again 14 in a row. Oof. Yeah, it's ugly. It's ugly, but um, hey, what are you going to do? The NFL, the draft is rapidly approaching. Everyone's got a mock draft. Everyone's got every idea on what every team's going to do in the first round. Um, but we believe the Bills are going to be seeking out wide receiver help because they made a big deal today. Stephon Diggs is out. He's on his way to Houston. The Bills are throwing in two picks on top of Diggs going, and they're getting a second rounder in 2025 in return. That's it. A second rounder in 25 for Diggs and a couple of late picks. To chat about it, we're joined now by longtime NFL player, head coach, ESPN NFL analyst. Here's Herm Edwards. How you doing, Herm? I am well. Um, th th that's not surprising um, with the trade of, of Diggs. I just think this Buffalo team now, where it's at, I think it's going to try to reset itself. They had a great opportunity last year, actually, to to knock the Chiefs off and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and get to the big game, and, and you know that did not happen. And I just think um, going forward now, they're looking at that situation. Uh, with some other players, with some older players as well, and saying we're going to reset. Diggs is a fabulous player, but at times he can be, uh, uh, I would say, uh, you know, high maintenance. Yes. <laughs> to, 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 to be kind, right? Okay. And, and we all know what I'm talking about. It. <laughs> you know, every receiver seems like they, they're all 7 11, right? They're always open, you know, no matter what. Just throw me the ball, right? It's, it's, well, it's just kind of funny how that stuff kind of you know, presents itself. Herm, does talent always kind of win out in a scenario like this? I mean, Houston's got a budding young star quarterback. Yeah. And why would they want to bring in a high-maintenance guy that might get in there and kind of mess things up a little bit? But it goes back to talent. They're just, they can't stop themselves. They're like, we got a talented guy that can catch it, and we're going to bring him in. Yeah, and, you know, th this team surprised everyone last year. New head coach, obviously, D'Amico Ryans and, and C.J. Stroud was, was fantastic. And when you look at what they're doing down there, I mean, you know, they bring in Mix, uh, the, the runner, the, you know, the Daniel Hunter, the end. I mean, they, they went and got some guys. Now now they got stuff on Dick. So, you know, they've already had some pretty good receivers in, in Collins and Dell and, and Schultz to tight end, and now they bring in Diggs. <laughs> My question will be, <laughs> how you how you going to get all these guys the ball, right? And we know if you don't get Stephon Diggs the ball, 
um, you're going to be visiting with him on the sidelines. So this will be kind of fun to watch. Yeah, and then in Buffalo, you know, when the dust settles, Josh Allen's probably sitting there saying, who am I throwing the ball to? Because mm. Diggs is in Houston. Gabe Davis is left. He's down in Jacksonville. The draft is still forthcoming. The assumption, I think, is pretty clear that they're going to draft somebody. But if you're Josh sure. Allen and Brandon Bean is telling you, okay, we got to reset here a little bit, he's probably thinking, well, Mahomes didn't reset. Or if they did, they still won. You know, like, wh- why am I resetting? I haven't won anything yet. How do how does the the head coach Sean McDermott, the GM Brandon Beam, how did they explain this to Josh Allen? Well, I think Josh Allen knows. You know, they, they, there's a window of opportunity here, and um, you know they've been in that window for the last couple of years, and just can't seem to get by. No one can seem to get by him. Is the Kansas City Chiefs? Uh, you know, the, obviously Burroughs did it one time, but when you look at that. Uh, you know, the AFC side of it. Um, the Bills were in their division. Miami had a good year. Everyone anticipates the Jets w- w- will be back this year because of Aaron Rodgers. The Ravens, we know, are going to be pretty good. Up to the, you know, the Cleveland Browns, they've invested a lot as well. Uh, the Steelers find themselves in the playoffs last year, you know, with, with not a, not real good quarterback play. And now they've seen the, you know, Russell Wilson, it seems to be maybe that he can help them. The Bengals, we know their quarterback. The Texans, you mentioned them. The Jaguars, you know, they had a little bit disappointing here. I mean, that that mm-hmm. was their division to win. Um, didn't turn out that way. And the Colts, Richardson got hurt, so that'll be interesting when he gets well. You know, we we talked about the Chiefs. We know who they are. I think the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to be good, guys. Really. I, I just, yeah, I do. I, I just do. Is that Harbaugh you know, that team. puts him over the top yeah, for you or what? I, yeah, I, I think he's going to do a good job. I mean, he's going to get back to fundamental football, and they're, they're going to be, a, they're gonna be a, a really good running football team, take a lot off the quarterback's plate. Um, they have some talented players. Now, they're a little bit of an older team, but, but, but this team, one in five in a division, they shouldn't be one in five. You know, five and 12 during the season. Uh, this team is going to going to be improved with Herm Edwards. So Diggs leaves Buffalo for Houston. A couple mm-hmm. of years ago, Kansas City moved off Tyreek Hill. A couple of years ago, Green Bay moved yeah. off Devonte Adams. Like, is that what do you make of this trend? Like, these are superstar All Pro. Those are three of the five best wide receivers of the last five or six years in football. Like, they are absolute studs. And the Packers, the Chiefs, and now the Bills have said. We're, we're fine with moving on. Does that speak to the, the nature of the position? Does it speak to if you have a great coach and a great quarterback, you're okay? Like, what, what do you make of this recent development in the NFL? I, I think all those things you mentioned, and I do think this, we can't lose sight of this, um, a lot of good receivers coming out of the draft this year. Mm-hmm. And here's the point about it now. College football, football is a passing league anymore. It's not the old – you know, league where I played in, and if you threw 25 passes in a game, you said, "Woo, that's a lot of passes." Mm-hmm. That, that's not, you know, a lot of college football is now in the pro football with these spread offenses and throwing. So these receivers are, are well versed coming into the National Football League, and most of these coordinators now, it's not so much their system; it's let's just get players of athletic, and, and we can build a system around them, and that's what good coordinators do. Look, the Buffalo Bills have one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. There's no doubt about that. And I think when you can allow him to to do what he needs to do and just play quarterback and not so much be the traffic cop on the sideline dealing with players, that's going to help him. So I just think if you're Buffalo, you're looking at the draft, you have 11 picks. You say, look, we can get some young receivers and we're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. Because the one thing they have, they got a quarterback. <laughs> at yeah, the end they of the do. day, you got a quarterback. Yeah. Well, yeah, with Herm Edwards, I mean, that's, I guess this isn't a recent development. It's always been the case. You've always been chasing those quarterbacks, but you look at what is going to happen this year where the Bears are likely going to take Williams. And then after that, like, there could be three, four quarterbacks taken in the top 10. Um, and it happens every, every draft or every couple of years, you see three, four, five guys go in the top 12, top 15. And then two or three years later, there's like one guy still on his t- on his on his respective team. Yeah. <laughs> you know that happens. It happened with the Allen draft, where all those guys moved on. Baker Mayfield moved on. Sam Darnold moved on. Um, it happened a couple of years ago in the Trevor Lawrence deal, where the rest of them are all yep. gone for the most part. And 
yet we're going to probably see it again in a few weeks where all these quarterbacks are going to go. They're all going to be labeled as the next, you know, number one franchise guy. And there's a pretty good chance, like 70 or 80% of them just won't develop into that. Yeah. And a lot of it has to do, as I mentioned earlier, is the, is the coach that's coaching them, is it his system? Or is it the system that the player can function in? And when you allow, when you build a system around the quarterback and which, what he can do well, then you let him play and you adjust it. It's not so much he's got to learn my system. A lot of quarterbacks are broken because of that. I've seen that mm-hmm. in the NFL um, it, historically. You know, you're asking guys to do certain things that they're incapable of doing where they have this trait that you liked in college and all of a sudden, you know, you don't want to do that. And I think more offensive coordinators now in the league or allowing quarterbacks to play off script. You, you know, we got these scripted plays, but you know, if it gets it, go ahead and do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so more coordinators are starting to go, you know what? We got to let this guy be who he is. Well, it's going to be a fun few weeks leading up to the draft. Um, obviously we had some news today. I expect more news as we move forward. Herm, uh, it's always great catching up with you. Thank you for doing this. Pleasure. Every day you'll hear something new. <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of the NFL. It never ends. It never ends. Uh, there he is, Thank Herm you. Edwards. You got it. Herm Edwards of ESPN. That's why it's a different beast. Like they play play 17 times once a week, and yet they're constantly in the news cycle. It's almost like Adele says, do something and get everyone talking again. Yeah. yeah. Let's get a big it's deal. It's like it's a little bit slow, so do something. Yeah. And the draft is its own like ecosystem that's just crazy. Yeah. Um, and then after the draft, you'll have mini camps and then guys will get injured. Then there'll be contract disputes. Yeah. Like it's just the same cycle every single the, year. The NFL Stop. draft is fascinating how they like that's, they're not just like Thursday, Friday content, then draft Saturday. It's like Mel Kiper. It's, it's a month event. Oh, like it's it, 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 crazy. It's insane. Man. The Super Bowl ends and it's draft time. Like immediately for yes. like three months. Yeah, it's the you, combine. It's crazy. Pro days. What do you guys think this Rasheed Rice? What do you? What's going to happen with Ooh, this guy? I don't know. I mean that. I, that's I, a luckily, legal issue. We luckily, can't really talk nobody about lost it. their life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like he was street racing, right? I think that that was. Yeah. The, the charge in the end, and I believe there's video, and yeah. I, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen there, but. Um, if you there's know? charges, he could be in one because yeah, it's, absolutely. I, I read today that he had leased a Lamborghini or something on the video. There was apparently weapon. Like there's a lot, like there's a lot of layers to this. Yes. Thing, yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, I, I think absolutely where he goes legally is one thing. He's going to be suspended. Like that's right. coming. Uh, and it may not matter if he's not even available to play in the NFL, but that's right. a young guy that, you know, in, in Kansas City, he really picked it up down the stretch, obviously made some big plays in the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what happens there, but it's a tough scene for sure. Well, and it changes the look of the team, right? Like that's the thing. Yep. If you if he's not on the team, like that's, it, you know, now you all of a sudden you've got to replace that player, mm-hmm. you know, either in-house or you got to wait for him if he does, you know, get suspended, all of that type of stuff if he gets away from the legal stuff so it, it's a spicy yeah. meatball for yeah sure. no it is for sure goodell will will I'm, I'm sure be on that and there will be some sort of answer i mean it's not a rush or anything they don't plenty time soon but something will come of that undoubtedly but it is supposed to be a draft that is stacked with wide receiver talent like crazy stacked with wide outs um and you see that every few years you'll see you know, you'll see guys drafted in the third, fourth, fifth round and show up and immediately be studs. And, right. you know, that's going to be a part of it, too. That's the amazing thing about the NFL is they'll, they'll pick guys in the sixth, seventh round that are starters, like that show up the camp and are ready to play and immediately, you know, in the lineup and, and factoring into wins and losses. Uh, it's just a totally different beast. All right, Pierre LeBron coming up. Role play level of concern. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. I'd like to offer up a life hack to our listeners and viewers. All right. If you are interested in tattoo removal, go to the gym for five months and you'll thank me after. When I was a moose and I started this process, I was crying, crying during these sessions, like a small kid. I, I was in tears. So you're saying I, you were getting tattoos removed? 
I started when I was I a moose, I and I'm in the middle of the process now after five months in the gym. Okay. Today, I sat there, and I looked like Rocky Balboa looking at Apollo Creed in the middle of the ring. I didn't even budge. Moose? I was in tears. So what, what, what is your theory on why? Because he told me, he goes, you had so much fat on your body. It was, it was all vibrating, and you were, it was killing you. <laughs> so, so if you want tattoo removal, yeah. go to the gym before you do I'm it for five months. Okay. It, it is so painful, though. Noodles, I had, uh, on my uh, wrists, I had Dr. Crying, Tata. Crying. Like doc- so I, I paid five grand in Hollywood to a guy named Dr. Tadoff. And it was like 12, 12, <laughs> I'm not lying, 12 like sessions, sessions you're supposed to go. Yeah, every eight weeks or whatever. And it's like literally the guy just burns them off, like literally lights them on fire. and bur- it, it was off. The, the pain that I went through, I only went through two. And then I, I bailed on them. So I've got like some tattoos that are. Oh, you got credits. Dr. I, Tadoff, does he accept those? I no, I Dr. Tadoff, I think I if I called there, I I know I have a credit there. Okay, but I'm never going back. I'm just gonna. What a eat practice! It. How do you get I, into that? Like, how no, do you get a PhD? Just, in this that? guy's a doctor, Ben Rutherford Road in Weston. He's mm-hmm. like a doctor, and he okay. knows he's got a machine. You got to wear glasses. Well, but I, I was in tears when I was a moose, and he said I had so much fat on my body. It was bouncing around and vibrating See, and hurting. I would think it'd be the opposite. No. That, dude, like, I, was, you'd be I was Rocky Balboa at the center of the ring, touching gloves with Apollo today. Mm. I did not move. That's interesting. Well, I just Googled Dr. Tadoff, and it came up, Dr. Tadoff lawsuit. And then it said, oh customers furious God. after Dr. Tadoff removal clinics. I think they just shut right down. Yeah. Just, How did you find a guy like that? Was there not I, internet back no, then? I, well, I mean, it was 12, 14 years ago. I'm sure there, there was internet, but, and it was like there were nurses. It wasn't a guy in a back alley with a, you know, a fork and, and a lighter. It was, it was a laser treatment, but it was, it was, I mean, they, they must have packed up shop. I don't yeah. know. I'm just reading it right now. That's scary, I, man. Yeah. That's, I, I hear, I, I guess. <laughs> You know, if First you're adamant, you want to. Yeah, I yeah. guess the the really the lesson There's here is don't bait. get tats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't get tats. But yeah, um, yeah, it sounds like it would be incredibly painful. Like it has to be. I mean, the nature oh. of a tattoo, the fact that it will exist the rest of your life in order to get that off, it's got to be excruciating. Ten times the pain. Yeah, it's got to be. And I guess oh. you can't. They can't really knock you out for that. You know, that's another. Oh. You don't want Doctor Tadoff to have a. <laughs> You know, someone there being here, throw this mask on. Dude, that and- guy's a criminal, man. You, he's, he's shut down. Yeah. I think I'm going to have to dig into him a little bit more here. But yeah, shuts its doors. Clients lose thousands of dollars. NBC. I'm just reading it right what now. What a racket. Yeah, come yeah. back in eight weeks. We'll still be here. Totally. Yeah, you got to pay up front, though, please. Yeah, pay for all 12 tomorrow. sessions they saw and come me back. Coming. They saw me coming. So there, your credits are, yeah, they're up in they're flames. Gone. They're gone. That's yep. a shame. Oh well. Well, what so what? What do you have? Like half a tattoo now? Like how no, does that work? No, but it work shows never... like it. It fades a little bit. Like I have them on my wrist. They're you know, and and I have them on the inside of my arms and stuff like that. They fade a little bit. So what you can see is, you know, everything's still there, but it's it's just a slight layer comes off of them. Right. And I had two treatments, and you're supposed to have like eight to twelve, depending on, you know, how you you, I guess, respond to it. Mm-hmm. And I was only two in, and then I moved away from L.A. I wasn't living there anymore, so that was it. See you later. Backed it in. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if that was, like, bilking the system. Like, they could get it done in one, but they're like, we got we to gotta really milk this so this guy will pay a lot more money. I, know, I would, yet, I think you'd pay more if you could only do it in one time without any pain agreed. or whatever. Agreed. I, I think, <laughs> I, I'm sure, uh, nowadays, the process, I believe, is a lot better. Oh, you're going what are you through. you laughing it? at somebody sent you. <laughs> Some guy just sent uh, a Homer Simpson <laughs> gif that is just a wild, wild. I'll, should I give it a retweet? I'll give yeah, it a retweet. Yeah, please give it a retweet. I'll give it a retweet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like this is like a medical breakthrough, though, man. You need to be studied because you're you're saying that there was a time when it was excruciating pain Hayes, because of I'm, your BMI. Like, I have a high pain threshold. Like, I was in tears. I'm like, yeah. I was clenching my 
my jaw so much. <laughs> you at the time. Really? You had to retweet that, you dumbass. <laughs> that was you six six months ago, though. Yeah, that's, that's not, not you now. Now, now you're exactly. Rocky Balboa, but there was a time you were. Forget homeless. I even told you guys. You guys are idiots. <laughs> that's like, you got to retweet funny. Homer Simpson. Well, that's that's Homer. I mean, I'll that, tell you though, if you got a Dr. soft rack, if you got a soft rack like that, it, it it's it's so painful. I almost, I felt like I was going to bite my, my jaw. Like it yeah. was insane. I wonder yeah, that where that the be. most like painful, like that's like, again, I don't have any tats, so I can't speak on it, but I've like, you see people that have like tattoos, tattoos on their, like in their, on their lip and yeah, like their yeah. on their and tongue. Stuff. And it's like, what are you doing? And, and yeah. it, like to get that removed, do you know how painful that would be? Like, yeah. I, I don't know. It's a big decision. I, I get decision. it. It's, yeah, it's a lifestyle thing and whatever. I, I'm not anti tattoo. It's just not something I ever cared for. But, yeah. you know, the idea of having to get it removed, just, you <sighs> must kind of feel like a moron that you're trying to get it removed. Like, you, Massive. you pay Massive. for yeah. it. And now you get to yeah. pay for it but, to get rid that, of it. It speaks to how people make mistakes when they're younger yeah. and then when you're older you're like I, I never i'll tell you guys later about my first mistake my okay. tattoo which yeah, is so we embarrassing i'll we show you the that. skull too with the flags okay we got a lot here <laughs> that's right. All right hour two coming up here lebron role play level of concern overdrive continues tsn 1050 and on tsn 2